Hey everybody, welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve and I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. Thank you for joining our very first broadcast. Hopefully it's the first of many because we got a lot of cool builds to do together. That being said, without further ado, Black Sheep Props would like to introduce you to this little baby. The Viking Axe. This bad boy is a nice little build. Super simple, you can do this even if you've never done it before. We're gonna take you through it. And you're gonna be able to do this easy. A lot of nice little details on this. Like I said though, it's a kind of a simple build, small build, but it's a bad boy. Got a carved wood handle, got a steel head. We've got leather wrapped around the handle. We've got small metal bracket on the back that makes it appear that it's holding the back of the axe head together with a few nail details, a nail detail on the end of the leather also. So if you want your very own Viking axe, we're going to go step by step through how to make it so that you get the props you deserve. Okay, so if you're ready to hit it, let's make something. Okay, here's the pattern. Super simple. Three pieces is all it takes to build this entire piece. Here's the Viking axe, small, tiny little prop, and like I said, only three pieces. So what you can do, you can make any shape you want for the handle, you can make any shape you want for the head, you do whatever you're comfortable with. Simple patterns. <clears throat> Draw out a piece of paper for the handle, and again, you can curve this any way you want. We've got simple piece of paper for the blade. I like to do my templates on, it's called Bristol board. It's a little thicker than regular paper. That way when you're tracing it, it's a lot cleaner, a lot more easy to, to deal with. So the <clears throat> steel head of the ax is gonna be made out of two pieces, two matching pieces, one for this side, one for that side, which is why we have this template. This template's gonna go like this wrap around the back and we'll cut it off when we know what the right length is and then we flip it we cut another piece of foam out of this side and the same thing we'll cut it off right here once we realize how long we need to make it to seam right together in the middle then when we're done with that we'll take a small piece of foam like this we'll cut it out we'll use it for the little piece of I don't know what you want to call it, the little piece to secure the head on there. And then we'll use our brass tubes to cut out a few little rivets for here and here to stick on. So I'll be able to do the rivets, we'll be able to do the piece that secures it, we'll be able to do the metal blade. We've got our handle. We'll also use our brass tube to cut out a little nail to look like the leather strap has been nailed on. And then we'll take this width of foam for the leather strap and we'll cut piece as long as we need and we'll just wrap it around. We'll start gluing and wrap it around and we'll end here and we'll seal it with the little nail. And it's that simple. Three pieces make up the template. Handle, blade, and a little piece to secure the back. Okay, now what we do is we start tracing our paper templates onto our phone. I like to use a Sharpie. Take your paper template, trace it out on your phone. All right, next, we'll trace out our paper template for our metal uh, axe head onto foam. Now you're gonna notice that you're gonna go different uh, thicknesses of foam for the different pieces that you're gonna be building. For instance, when we do something small, like this little metal strip that seals the back of the axe. We don't want a super thick piece. That would kind of not look realistic. So we're going to have to, as you build things, you're going to realize you want to determine what kind of a thickness you're going to want to use for your foams. It's going to vary. Um, so something small like this and something really thin, we're going to go with something small, which is what we originally traced out for that piece, which is probably the thinnest foam, which is a two millimeter foam. And then when we go to something like the axe head itself, we're going to make it up out of two pieces that are six millimeters thick. So when you buy foam, you'll end up working with probably two millimeter for the thin stuff, maybe four millimeter for a little bit thicker, six millimeter for thicker, and on up, up to the 
half inch thick floor mat foam that you can use for making helmets and things like that. So, the template for the axe head. Now, since it's on black foam, you want to get something that you can write with that's silver, maybe a silver Sharpie, or you can find different kinds of pens online that have, they're more like a paint pen. So what we do, and again, since we're using Bristol board, it keeps our template a little thicker, a little sturdier, a little more stable when we're tracing it out. So what we do is we hold it down. And we're going to flip it. Very easy. You can do this. Anybody can do this. And that's it. Okay, now we're going to start to build up our foam for our axe handle. And like we talked about earlier, you're going to decide different thicknesses of your foam for each piece you make. So we did the two millimeter for the little plate to secure the head. We did two pieces of six millimeter for the actual blade and for the handle, we need to end up with a thickness like this. A lot thicker than the other two things we just worked on. So what we're going to do is we're going to take three pieces of 10 millimeter foam. It's going to give us the exact thickness we want for the axe handle. And then on top of that, we're going to be dremeling edges and we're going to be cutting off edges. So once we stack these three pieces of foam up and we dremel off edges, we're going to end up with the thickness that we want for the handle. Okay, now <clears throat> we're going to glue our two pieces, first two pieces of 10 millimeter together. And then once that dries, we'll put on the third piece and that will give us the thickness for our handle. So what we do is we take our, this is a glue pot or cement keeper. Uh, shoe repair guys use it all the time. Uh, it's perfect for keeping your glue. So what you do is you just take your contact cement. And now we're gonna do this side. And then once the two sides dry, that's when you stick them together. That's why it's called contact cement. You apply glue to both pieces that you wanna to stick together and you wait till it dries. And then once it dries and you stick it together, Bam, it's impossible to pull that apart. You'll probably rip your foam before you'll be able to pull the two pieces apart because contact cement is absolutely crazy how strong it is. So we're gonna continue gluing these and move on from there. Okay, so <clears throat> we waited three or four minutes. The contact cement has dried on both pieces when you touch it. It's barely tacky. And this is when it really sticks like crazy. So we take it and we literally just lay this piece on top of this piece and we lay it down nice and smooth. We smooth it out. Just make sure that we're getting really good contact everywhere. And we just squeeze it together just to make sure everything is touching. And there's two pieces stuck together. The first two of the 10 millimeter pieces of foam that we're gonna use for our axe handle. We have our paper template that we cut out of Bristol board so it's a little bit stiffer. We know that it's gonna fit on our piece of foam. Take our silver marker, whichever kind you like, silver Sharpie. There's all kinds of different paint pens at the arts and craft stores. There's our axe handle. Now, what we're gonna have to do is, when you're doing something long with foam, you don't want it to be wobbly. So we don't want our axe handle to be flimsy. So, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna put a support inside of here. So we're gonna take a brass tube, we're gonna cut it to the length we want it, we're gonna bend it, and we're gonna shape it, and we're gonna fit it right in the middle of our handle. So we'll do that next. Okay, so we took our brass tube, cut it to the length we wanted it, we bent it to fit in our handle, and we're gonna embed this in the handle so that when we take this piece of foam and we seal it over the top of it, it'll be stiff. And the way we're gonna do that is after we bend our brass pole to where we want it, we leave it a little bit short on the ends, and what we're gonna do is we're going to trace
for where our support's gonna go. Now we're gonna get a Dremel and we're gonna Dremel out this crease in the middle and we're gonna embed the brass pole in it so that it's stiff. Okay, so when you Dremel, you have to wear a dust mask. You do not wanna breathe in EVA foam dust. Uh, they say that when dust gets in your lungs, it never leaves, so be safe. Okay, my voice is muffled now because I have my dust mask on. I like to wear gloves because the Dremel dust flies everywhere, gets all over the place, so I have a fan on off to the side that blows some of it out of the way. I have my mask on and we're ready to Dremel. Okay, so there you can see the trench we did with the Dremel all the way down your piece. Our support bar goes right inside the Dremel trench and fits in there perfectly. Just like that, that way you've got stability when you're handling it. And there's dust, you might not be able to see it here, but there's dust all over the place, black foam dust, so definitely wear your mask. Okay, so the next step. Now we can't stick this over the top because then once we stick this over the top, we're not gonna know where our pattern is or where our metal bar is. So what we're gonna do is before we do that, we're going to take our first half of our piece. We're gonna take our knife and we're gonna cut as close as we can to the line, but stay just outside of it. And we'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so what we want to do is we just want to take our foam. We want to cut it as close as we can to the edge, all the way around. Now, we've got our foam handle cut out. Now the reason we did this <clears throat> is so that after we trap this to seal the bar inside of our foam handle and we turn it over, we will now be able to see the shape of our handle. And then we'll take our paper template, we'll put it over, then we'll redraw the line and we know that when we cut out, we're not gonna hit the metal bar and we're gonna match exactly what we wanted with our template. Okay, so next step. We bring our glue pot back into the picture. Now this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip our metal bar to the outside. We're gonna take our contact cement We're gonna take our contact cement. We're going to get it on the back side of our brass tube like that. When we slip this in our trench, and we push it down inside like that, we have the one half of our axe with our support bar on the inside, our brass bar. We've got contact cement on there. Let's move that out. Now we're going to take this side of the foam and we're going to cover it with contact cement. And now we wait four or five minutes for this to set up and then we'll stick it together. Okay, five minutes or so has gone by. You can speed up that process too by using a hair dryer or a heat gun, um, but it dries pretty quick. Now that we know that it's not super tacky, it's time to flip this piece over on top of here. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, we're gonna embed our brass pole inside our piece. So we lay it over the top, we smooth it down, we just, 
smush it down all the way around. And now what we're going to do is we're going to bring the paper template back into the picture. Now we know that when we draw this line on here, we know that the brass tube is safely inside. So we get our pen, we come back, we hold it down. All right, so as you can tell, there it is. There's our axe handle built up to the thickness we want it. There's the outline. We took the step of cutting around just outside where our template line was so that once we stuck these two pieces together and we flipped it over, we would see where our handle was. Because if we didn't do that step by cutting the outside of this out, when we flipped this over, we would have had no idea where our piece was inside there. So here we go. Next step is gonna be getting our knife sharp and cutting this out. Okay, sharpened our knife blade. Now we're gonna be able to cut right on the line. Nice smooth cut, very smooth cut. Right in there because of a sharp knife, you definitely don't wanna use a dull knife because you'll tear it up and it'll look terrible. Okay, so we've got first edge cut out. So we come in, we saw through. Look at how clean those cuts are. That's what happens when you have a sharp blade. The same thing, we're gonna to start to saw through and then put your weight on it. And we're gonna come over to this side. We're gonna take this. Very smooth cuts, very smooth. Cannot beat having a sharp knife. Okay, now we're gonna take the long cut. We're gonna go through it. And we're going to be careful as you go. Don't rush. You don't want to cut your finger off. And you always want to keep your knife in front of your supporting hand. This is your supporting hand. This is your knife. You don't want to jam this way super fast. Sometimes you'll have to go near it, but be careful. Try to keep your hand behind the knife blade. So if you can tell, I'm keeping my support hand behind the knife blade. Beautiful. Look at that nice smooth cut. Super smooth cut. That's how we did it. That's how we took three pieces of EVA foam, sandwiched them together, embedded a tube, a brass tube in the middle for stiffness so the handle's thick and stiff. Now that's most of our shape right there. You can completely see the shape of the axe now. Now we're going to go in we're going to cut the edges off, all four edges all the way around, and then we're gonna Dremel. Start to saw on a 45 degree angle, back and forth, very slowly. We're cutting off the edge. We're just cutting off the corner. Now it's rough, but it doesn't matter because we're gonna Dremel it. Now we have our axe blade, or I'm sorry, our axe handle with all the corners carved off of it. Now it's very rough, looks very hacked up, but don't worry because the Dremel will get rid of all that. So that's what we're gonna do next. Next we're gonna go around it with the Dremel with the really rough sanding bit and we're gonna take a lot of that stuff off. Wear your dust mask. Okay, look at that. Nice and smooth. Very cool, very cool. The Dremel is awesome. You have to have a Dremel. So we started by cutting off the edges. I have my mask on, that's why I sound a little muffled. We cut off the edges with a knife and then we went over it with a Dremel with the really rough sanding bit. Now we're gonna go over it with a little bit smoother sanding bit just to really smooth it out a little more. Okay, beautiful. 
smoothed a lot of it off, much smoother even now. That is turning out to look just like an axe handle. It looks like a tree branch. It's getting there. Okay, next, what we're going to do is we're going to make it even a little bit smoother by using our sanding sticks. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go over all the edges that way, sand it with the Dremel, and it really starts to smooth it out. Really nice. Oh yeah, that looks good. The uh, sanding sticks do wonders, that's for sure. So Wow, very nice. Well, I don't want to sound nerdy, but I'm going to. It looks really, it's really satisfying and exciting when you see it go from a rough piece of foam to something that's starting to look really smoothed out. Feels good. Very nice. Very, very nice. That concludes part one of our Viking Axe build. In part two, we'll tackle building and assembling the iron axe head. We'll also tackle wrapping the leather strap around the handle, and we'll also tackle some of the little additional details like the nail heads, some gouging out of the blade, a little bit of a weathered distressed feel. It's gonna be great. If you liked the first episode, then please subscribe to this channel because we're gonna go step by step through a lot of other awesome builds. You're not gonna wanna miss it, and we're doing it for one reason only, so you get the props you deserve. Thanks a lot, see you next time.